For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. As of late Friday, the ceasefire in Gaza seems to be holding, if tentatively. While we should be pleased that this round of fighting appears temporarily on hold, we must realize that without changes in U.S. foreign policy, it is only a matter of time before the killing begins again. It feels like 2009 all over again, which is the last time this kind of violence broke out in Gaza. At that time, over 1,400 Palestinians were killed, of which just 235 were combatants. The Israelis lost 13, of which 10 were combatants. At that time, I said of then-President Bush's role in the conflict, quote, it's our money and our weapons, but I think we encouraged it. Certainly, the president has said nothing to diminish it. As a matter of fact, he justifies it on moral grounds, saying, oh, they have a right to do this without ever mentioning the tragedy of Gaza. To me, I look at it like a concentration camp, close quote. The U.S. role has not changed under Obama administration. The same mistakes continue, as journalist Glenn Greenwald said last week. For years now, U.S. financial, military, and diplomatic support of Israel has been the central enabling force driving this endless conflict. The bombs Israel drops on the Gazans and the planes that they use to drop them and the weapons they use to occupy the West Bank and protect settlements are paid for in substantial part by the U.S. taxpayer. Last week, as the fighting raged, President Obama raced to express U.S. support for the Israeli side in a statement that perfectly exemplifies the tragic comedy of U.S. foreign policy. The support for the Israeli side because he said, quote, no country on earth would tolerate missiles raining down on its citizens from outside its borders, close quote. Considering that this president rains down missiles on Yemen, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and numerous other countries on a daily basis, the statement was so hypocritical that it didn't pass the laugh test. But it wasn't funny. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton traveled to Tel Aviv and to meet with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, but she refused to meet with the elected Palestinian leaders. Clinton said upon arrival in Israel, quote, America's commitment to Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering, close quote. Does this sound like an honest broker? At the same time, Congress acted with similarly ignobility when an unannounced resolution was brought to the House floor after the business of the week had been finished. And in less than 30 seconds, the resolution was passed by unanimous consent without debate, without most representatives even having heard of it. It was that resolution, H. Res 813, was so one-sided, it is not surprising they didn't want anyone to have the chance to read and vote on it. Surely, at least a handful of my colleagues would have objected to language like, the House of Representatives expresses unwavering commitment to the security of the state of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state with secure borders, close quote. U.S. foreign policy being so one-sided actually results in more loss of life and of security on both sides. Surely Israelis do not enjoy the threat of missiles from Gaza, and nor do the Palestinians enjoy their Israeli-imposed inhuman conditions in Gaza. But as long as Israel can count on its destructive policies being underwritten by the U.S. taxpayer, it can continue to engage in reckless behavior. And as long as the Palestinians feel the one-sided U.S. presence lined up against them, they will continue to resort to more and more deadly and desperate measures. Continuing to rain down missiles on so many increasingly resentful nations, the U.S. is undermining rather than furthering its security. We are on a collision course with much of the rest of the world if we do not right our foreign policy. Ending interventionism in the Middle East and replacing it with friendship and even-handedness would be a welcome first step. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm. <laughs> That's what I said.
what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.